everybody. Welcome back to part two of this athlete marketing series. Um, this is part of the 2020 podcast, All In with Natalie Alport podcast highlight series, where I am recapping on specific topics. A lot of the topics have been really mindset focused, but I wanted to kind of branch out and talk about something that I'm really passionate about and the space that I personally work in uh, when it comes to social media, personal branding and athlete marketing. So we're going to start off this episode with three tips that athletes can use to build their social media profiles. And this is specifically coming from Dr. uh, Tilo Kunkel. He is a PhD in sports management, and he actually teaches in in the space of athlete marketing and branding. Here are three tips uh, from Dr. Tilo Kunkel. Know who you are and promote that rather than trying to be someone else. Treat it as a business and don't feel too good for getting started with a portfolio. Think about who you are and think about who you want to be online and how they align. So that's really about who are you as a person and how can you convey that in a manner that is attractive to a specific audience. So don't try to fit in somewhere that and be someone that you're not. Um, find the audience that likes who you are natural and then treat it as part of your business. Probably the second part, as in would if you were paid to do this every day, would you spend the hour or would you spend the half an hour or would you just start say on Sunday, I'm going to t- take three hours and I prepare my post for the week. So the scheduled one, the writing it out and so on. And then number three is don't feel like you're too good for building your portfolio. You still need to demonstrate that value to sponsors. They care for what you can do for them rather than about you. It's really about them. So don't feel like you are too good to build a portfolio based off something if you if you don't have it yet. All right. So next up, we have JT Barnett, former pro hockey player turned entrepreneur and wellness influencer. And he chats deeper about how like brands such as like Overtime or those media brands that we see on social media are really effective at growing athletes, personal brands and how the hype is kind of built off of those things. And that's how athletes can really start taking off when you see how some of those media highlights and those pages work. If you look at what overtime the brand has done for players mm-hmm. of like uh, Zion Williamson, uh, it was Williamson, right? Not Williams. Yeah, Zion Williamson. Yeah. yeah. So. It, before he was even in the NBA of just like taking somebody that's in high school, putting content around them, showing their story. And then when they do actually get the recognition in like the real world, then they just like pop off. And I think that that just is going to expand so much more, especially with junior guys and college guys and with like places that have that are aesthetically appealing like i think we want to talk about like college hockey like i think that all the west coast right is right now is not used at all aside from arizona state university i think that that's a a real estate that will be immensely huge in the next 10 years when you're going to recruit kids and it's like would you rather play for vermont or would you rather play for it play in Los Angeles for University of Southern mm-hmm. California. I think that that's just like a no brainer for a lot of kids to in a bargaining chip. That's very, that makes sense for me. So once that starts to shift and then a kid's in Los Angeles and he's on one of the better colleges and he can make money off of himself. Like for me, that just is a lot of synchronicity for like stuff to pop. So next up, we have my good friend, Lucas Parker. He's a multi-time CrossFit Games athlete, an extremely fit individual, full-time athlete. And we talk more about personal branding. It's true. One of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately, and um, when people ask me about personal branding or different conversations I've had with about athlete branding is, and, and advice that I've even been given is, like, what do you have the authority to talk about? So like, what's uniquely you that you can add the conversation to? Like a million and one people are doing body weight workouts. So it's like, are you, do you uniquely have the people who are really interested in a body weight workout from you? And do you have the authority to speak on that? Or is it best like, Hey, I don't need to add to that conversation, but I could talk about warming up for the body weight workouts or um, the mindset about staying motivated to do the workouts. Like there's all these different angles. And I think everyone has their own unique place where they have their unique twist on things that they could add instead of just trying to copy and do the exact same thing as everyone else, just to jump in. Right. On it. 
Yeah. So how, how do you find out like what that is for, for yourself? Yeah. I just think it's like, it's, it's thinking about like, what's unique to you and what do people ask you about a lot? Like I know for me, when I was snowboarding, a lot of people would ask me like, how did you get these sponsors? Like, how did you get connections with these companies? And then um, they would ask me, how do you train? Because um, I was like, really strong for a snowboarder and really fit and it wasn't like really big to be training it actually is right. it's pretty anti-culture to train as an action sport athlete a lot of them are like yeah. no no it's not cool and i was like in the gym every day <laughs> after snowboarding and i was like whatever guys yeah. um so yeah those are like a lot of the questions i got about like preventing huh. injury and um oh, mindset cool. and all those things and so like after you know years of I think it takes a while to to come to terms with it because i know like i i've helped a lot of people with sponsorships and different things just you know, emailing them back and giving them advice, but I never actually pursued it as like, Hey, I could help people with this or, but mm. after a while, I think you start to see like where you feel, you know, you might actually have a voice and like some advice for people. And that comes from like the questions that you get asked. I, I think in the most part, like, yeah. um, but I, at the same time, a lot of athletes, probably almost every CrossFit athlete, for example, is getting asked what workout they do, what macros do you eat? Um, what yeah. supplements do you take? And so I, I, that's why they all have those sponsors and are all sharing those kind of things, but they all could have their own little twist on it. Like some people are really good at warm up. Some people like Brent Fikowski are really good at breaking down, the movements and providing those like little competition and training tips instead of just like, here's my full program. It's like, here's this other angle. So I, I think those athletes that take that approach do better than everyone just putting out the same ab program or something. Right. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Um, so uh, what you said about people asking about sponsorships, like I think there's kind of two angles there. Like do, do you ever find yourself like someone's asking about sponsorships and the, the, I, the kind of the question is like, money base, right? Like, Hey, I, how do I get, like, how do I get paid? Like for, for just like what I'm doing. And so yeah. do you, is that like a good question or an okay, okay question? Or is your internal reaction? Like, well, I mean, if you're worried about money, right? Now, like, like, you, like for you answering that question, do you ever like look at the athlete and be like, well, I think you just kind of need to get like better and then you won't really need to worry about that. <laughs> or like, it's so, like, how do you, as an athlete asking and wondering about sponsorships, how do you know if you're a, if you're good enough to warrant like advertising and sponsorships on your shoulders? Right. Yeah, that's that's a big one for sure. Like especially for a lot of the younger athletes like in action sports it's like a kid who's like 12 and they want a sponsor and then of course when it comes to crossfit usually you're like in your 20s. So it's a little yeah. bit of a different age group. Um but yeah, it's it's a pretty common question and actually when I was maybe two years into snowboarding, I reached out to my local skate shop and I was like, Hey, I want to get on the team. I like submit all these other things to them. And the interesting thing about it was like, they said no, because I was huh. too, like, I was pretty early on, but I had sold them kind of like on my story and my mission. So like, I was like, like, listen, I know I'm here. Like I was pretty self-aware of knowing that I wasn't like the best yet. But I said, hey, I'm a young snowboarder, like the only one female in Ottawa who's like doing this. This is my mission. I want to get to here. And then within like a year or two, they saw my progression and saw like nice. I was on that path. So then they came back and were like, yeah, like we do have a spot on our team for you. And wow. so I think that's like, I think build. it's never too early to build a relationship. So if you can just, right. you know, start talking with someone it, and not necessarily making an ask, or if you do at least keep that conversation going so mm -hmm. that you know if you're a young athlete and you're new to the sport don't go and say like hey uh, I want to get paid or I need this sponsor because I need to pay for this competition just try to get a relationship going build your connections so that when you are at that level and you've already talked to them and showed them like this is my mission and I'm going this like you know to here they might not wait until you're like already up here they they've seen that you've already made that that progression nice. you're on that yeah. path but if you just join them like here and you know, you're going here, but you didn't show them when you were here that this is the path you're on. They don't have a way to gauge, like, have you been improving? Have you not been? How right. are you going about, you know, building those connections? And I think that's, that's a pretty big one is like, you could be the best athlete in the world, but if you can't um, market yourself to a company or actually show them that you're invested in the relationships, you're not going to get as much as you could. If you were just, you know, talking to people, opening the doors up for when you do get to that level. 
Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Okay, so next we talk with author and former professional basketball player Malcolm Lemons, and we talk specifically on tips for young athletes when it comes to social media. We've talked a lot about the foundational elements. I think being genuine and authentic with your platform and the story that you're telling is is point blank number one. Um, understanding and having having a direction for where you're trying to go, what what your vision is, I think is really important. So. You know, what is your why? What is your objective with all this? Why are you doing it? Um, and then also understand your values. What is your brand values? And then um, another key would probably be your brand positioning statement. So, I mean, there are tons of athletes out there who play your sport who are just like you. What makes you different? Why should a brand want to do a deal with you? Why should somebody give this opportunity to you over another athlete? So it's understanding mm -hmm. those nuances and those subtle um tactics that help you gain an edge over your competition or another athlete who might be competing for the same deals as you or the same opportunities. So I think when you, when you look at a brand and some of the most, the biggest personal brands in the world, they're the ones who really understand the foundation of what, of what they're, what they're about um, and, and what kind of drives their brand in the direction that they're trying to go. So I think those those are some of the, like the the keys and some of the the small strategies that athletes should probably start to think about uh, when they're younger because these are these are things that a lot of athletes aren't doing at that age. But when you do right. it, you kind of create that separation. And by the time you're in high school or college, you know brands opportunities are knocking at your door because you did the the groundwork, you laid the foundation, and now you you start to see the 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 reaping the benefits and rewards and the fruits of your labor. So. Following with the trend of tips for young athletes, I asked a similar question to JT Barnett about his tips for young athletes when it comes to social media, and here is what he had to say. I was blessed that, like, I was into other stuff, so, like, I would be going super hard into my creative stuff, and I know, mm -hmm. like, probably some of the kids listening are into things more than just sports, especially now. Uh, I would, like, try to spend so much time understanding what else I enjoy. Like, if that's video games, like, go hard at streaming and gaming for a bit. If that's, like, doing TikToks or content or starting your own YouTube channel, like, my little brother and sister have both started their own, like, TikToks and love doing that. <laughs> so awesome. um, or, if it's, or if it's something that might not be so creative, but is, is something, like, learning, how, like, how the stock market works or, like, learning how money, like, just other things that you could be interested in as a kid that doesn't have to be your sport. Mm -hmm. Take time to do that right now because as soon as like everything opens back up, you're going to be diving so much harder back into that sport that you couldn't do for so long or that whatever it is that you couldn't do for so long. So take the time right now to like see what other stuff am I interested in that will help me be more well-rounded and be better at that sport in the long run. Next up, I had a chat with Max Klemenko. Now, Max is a viral TikTok star. He has almost 2 million followers on the app TikTok. Now, he makes very edutainment-type content, so educational mixed with edu entertainment. And so he's a little bit of a different niche than what you usually see on TikTok, and he's really owned this niche by being unique. And so in this clip, he talks specifically about why being unique is so important and how you truly are your personal brand. Like no one's going to care. No one's going to watch. You know, I've been looking at some kind of creators and, you know, we can talk about this kind of kind of off camera. And some of them have a very smart way of like getting hype in order to eventually get impact. Right. So it's like there is a, you know, if I come out and I'm just like, uh, okay, guys, so listen, like you really have to like wake up early and stuff like that to like succeed and stuff like that. But like, okay, bye. Like no one's going to care. No one's going to watch. And even if I make it like great with like all of the details and like no one's going to watch, but like, okay, add the hashtags, smile, like clean up, like have a cat, like research what makes people watch stuff, like pop a balloon, do this, do a sound, do the transition, like all of those elements, they aren't necessary for the impact, but they are because it's like, that's how you, you get seen, right? You know, and, and also it's like you kind of, in terms of like mental fitness and stuff like that, you kind of have to pick your battles, right? So there is no disrespect to like people who are beautiful that are famous for being beautiful. I don't think that's a good strategy. I've seen people do that and they are, they're deeply unhappy. Um, so I don't think it's, it's a good strategy at all. On the other side, like, you know, if you are an athlete, you post athlete stuff, great. Makeup artist, great. Like, cosplayer, great. You know, I'm just not those people. I could be a, a prank person, right? 
it's I'm, I'm very kind of um, I don't get shy I'm very kind of socially fine so I could be doing like pranks in public and maybe I will but it's just like <laughs> I just want to do a certain type so if it's a prank then it's going to be like a social experiment about something you know because I think there are better people that are doing this stuff like you know I'm not going to be David Dobrik at like comedy blogs but right. David Dobrik will not be me when it comes to like this particular type of video because he's not me. He didn't have my experience. All right. So next I had Bailey McDonald. She is a Canadian snowboard athlete. Um, and we talked a little bit about some of her tips when it comes to sponsorship. Yeah, I would give advice to like kids who are trying to get sponsored to just like not push it on them because companies don't like that. But <laughs> and and be, be professional with them. Um, whatever it is like make a video write a little like report not a report but like tell them about yourself and stuff just stuff like that just yeah that be yourself with them that's all they want mm -hmm. and give them value yes yeah yeah no i i really like that too because i think like a lot of people they go even actually so there's like a one of like um my clients in the agency um they I, they got a message from a kid who wants to be sponsored for something for tennis yeah. i think the other day and uh just seeing his his response i was like well because i know like he's a young hustler and he's like me back <laughs> in the day i was like i'm gonna respond to him and give him the email of who he should contact but yeah. like if i was actually the company i probably like wouldn't respond because the way he put it was all like you know i'm this age and i need to have a sponsor because i need yeah. to do this and this and i was like well if you're just talking about yourself like that's no way to start any sort of relationship no. like you need to either like just start a relationship like how you kind of had where you had that connection with somebody and yeah um they kind of got you in the door and then also like yeah proving that you can you can provide value like you know if, yeah. for me it was like reaching out to a company and being like hey like you won't you are in like fitness and health um you don't have any snowboard athletes and if you want to break into the snowboard scene and people who are training like yeah. i could help you get into that market and Versus, yeah, if I just went and said, like, hey, this is my results and I need money to get to this next event. Like, yeah, how, what, what does that do for anybody? Like, it just uh, just asking people for stuff is not yeah. really going to come off super no. authentic. No, it's not like, yeah, and that's why companies, like, shoo a lot of people away is just for that reason. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, yeah, it's, it's one of the things, like, there's obviously companies, you know, they have limited budget and everything, but, like, I, I truly believe if you can pro show the value first, those, yeah. there's a way to make it work. Even if you're starting super small, like, you know, if they have no budget to add someone to their team, they they still have like some product or something where if you can prove yourself for a year, yeah. that it could really help you move up. But yeah, it's not going to happen if you just make a big ask no. <laughs> off the get go. All right. Lastly, we're going back to Malcolm Lemons, a branding expert, and we're, we're chatting about how athletes can make money in different ways outside of just sponsorships thinking outside of the box and being creative with how you're how you're trying to make money nowadays it's easy to start a clothing line you all you got to do is you know set up a shopify site and you know you can do drop shipping or whatever the case may be like there's so many opportunities like affiliate marketing podcast sponsorships you sponsorships traditional sponsorships on social media um speaking opportunities training sessions like there's a number of different ways uh, you can you can create revenue streams outside of sports as an athlete, even if you think you don't, you know, have any skills or anything of that nature. People will pay you to learn what you know or you to train them or come speak to their team, whatever the case may be. But it's about understanding, uh, I think, one, what you're what you care about, what you're passionate about two, what you're good at, you know, because not everybody's going to be a good business person to, sh to set up an e-commerce platform or. Not everybody's going to be a good speaker to go out here and, and, you know, in the world we're living now, you're doing virtual uh, speaking engagements or, or speaking to teams, you know, over Zoom or whatever the case may, may be. Um, not everybody's going to be good at that. So you have to figure out what you're good at and what you actually like to do and then figure out what are the different ways to actually make money doing that. And so um, I think I think that's how athletes have to start thinking about it. And like I said before, now is 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 the time to really understand how to make money outside of sports because we don't know what this is going to look like the next, next several months, especially with student athletes, um, you know, being on the verge of, of name, image, and likeness, and them being able to monetize their brands and professional athletes potentially not having a season. And we just don't know what the future holds. So. The more you build these skills and understand how to leverage your, your relationship capital and your brand outside of sports, 
the more you can set yourself up for success when you're done playing, but even now when it's when you need the income. If you really like that last one about how athletes can make money outside of just sponsorships, I have a YouTube video on that subject specifically. It's also on my Instagram, on my IGTV, on how athletes can make money, alternative ways that athletes can make money and become a full-time athlete. Now, thank you guys for tuning in for these two-part series on athlete marketing. If you're just tuning into this one, you haven't watched number one, uh, definitely go check out part one for some more clips when it comes to athlete marketing, social media, and personal branding. If you have any more questions about athlete marketing, social media, or personal branding, I'd love to chat with you. Send me an email, nat natalie at 9393agency.com. Uh, natalie at 93agency.com. That is 93, the numbers. And uh, yeah, hit me up. I do some consulting with athletes, organizations, businesses, um, teach to, to groups uh, how to use social media more effectively, uh, especially as athletes, but also for coaches, influencers, and brands and organizations who are looking to partner with athletes. Thank you again for tuning in. If you have the time, leave a review, share, pass on this episode to someone who it would benefit. And uh, have a great rest of your week.